big jobs report came out about an hour and 20 minutes ago. 134,000 jobs added in the month of September. Come on in, please. Larry Cudlow, director of the National Economic Council and a guest on the program this morning. Larry, welcome back. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks very much, Stu. Um, look, I go back to the early 1980s when Reagan <laughs> cut taxes and we were getting three, 400,000 new jobs each and every month. Now we've got just 134,000 last month. I call that disappointing. What's happened? Well, I want you to be more optimistic, Stuart. I want you to take the over on the whole position here. You're at 134, but the prior two months revised up 87,000. So these numbers bounce around. That's a big upward revision. By the way, it's very bullish for the future. So really, I will argue the number is 221,000. Okay. Might even be better than I'd adjust it for hurricanes. But, 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 but why are we not back to the number. great? Why are we not back to the three, four hundred thousand per month gains of thirty years ago? Well, again, I was a Cub Scout during Reagan's first term. I was working at OMB, <laughs> and you had look. Uh, we were coming out of a very deep, 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 deep recession. So the cycle position is a little different. If you're going to run two 225,000 jobs per month, which is pretty close to uh, what we're talking about, you're going to get, what, 2.4, 2.6 million jobs a year. That is very, very good, and it's steady, and we're in this capital goods boom because of low tax rates and deregulation, so I think it's a very strong jobs picture. And let's not forget, we're at 3.7 unemployment rate. That's an awful good number, and across the board, uh, you know, the so-called minority unemployment rates are coming way down. We're going back to the 80s in terms of blue-collar workers. That was my favorite story in the history of the Washington Post, right? Front page above the fold two weeks ago. It's my favorite so, supply-side newspaper. So I think that's very important. <laughs> Sarcasm is a low form of wit, so I'm told. Um, now, President Trump, uh, on several occasions, He's looked at the Federal Reserve and said, hey, knock it off. We don't like these rate increases. Is the president trying to influence the Fed? No, I don't believe so. Look, President Trump's a very smart guy. He's got a lot of business and financial experience. He has a lot of opinions. As you know, he's not uh, reluctant to give those opinions out. We know and we agree the Fed is independent. They're going to make their own decisions. They're going to do what they need to do. I'm very pleased personally the Chairman Jay Powell has been saying publicly, better economic growth, which is, you know, what we're getting now, right? Three, four percent. They said it couldn't be done. Better economic growth does not necessarily cause inflation. You got a steady dollar, so there's really no inflation, two percent, less than two percent last three months. The real action here, Stu, I don't want to get too bogged, but really, the real action on rates is not the short end, it's the bond market. It's the 10-year yield. Yeah, well, it's right? at 322 it's right now. It's gone yes, up sharp in the last couple That's of days. Right. Well, if you look carefully, break it up, you know, you have the nominal yield, three, we'll call it 325. Most of the increase is in real rates, the TIPS rate, so-called, inflation adjusted. That's about 80%. That's gotten to 1%. That's telling us that market expectations for faster growth and higher capital returns and more labor force increases, that's a very positive thing as these long-term rates normalize. I'm keeping my eye on that real rate because okay. that's a good forecaster of the economy. Yeah, Larry, you do know that we have a buzzer on this program, and when anybody gets real technical, we <laughs> buzz them. So the yeah, that's oh, what no. we do. Yeah, well, but we, we would so, never buzz Larry Codlow. So far, so good. So far, so good. <laughs> talk, talk to me about inflation and wages up 2.8 percent over the past year. If inflation's running at about what 2 percent, a little bit over 2 percent, that's not much of a wage gain in real terms, is it? Again, I find that disappointing. Well, again, I, I want to, you know, I want you to get back. I want you to take the over. I want you to be more optimistic, Stu. <laughs> Uh, let me just say a couple of things. Number one, last three months, the Fed's favorite measure, uh, consumer price deflator, is actually about one and a half percent. Year on year, you're correct. It's about two percent. But, 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 don't ring that bell on me now. I want to get this out. Twelve month change in average hourly earnings, two point eight percent. You got to add in average hours worked, hours worked, which are rising beautifully at two point six percent. Put them together, that's a proxy for labor wage, blue-collar income, 5.4% 5 
less the two gives you 3.4 percent real wages after tax it'll be even stronger that is a tremendous inducement to work and indicates strength of the economy hmm. i beat the buzzer did i beat the y buzzer yes <laughs> you did you did we would never buzz larry kudlow it's as simple as that larry i, I, I gotta talk to you about this bloomberg story i know you've seen it bloomberg alleges that china has placed little chips on motherboards which are the heart of servers which are used by big american technology companies in other words there is a hardware spying operation going on here now, it occurs to me that that might interrupt any trade talks you've got with China, because this is a major flashpoint. If it is true, Stu, I agree with you. And we are on guard. Nothing China does on these uh, fronts of stealing technology and infiltrating and cyber hacking. Nothing surprises us, right? They've played dirty pool for a very long time. Now, having said that, I read the Bloomberg story. Bloomberg is a fine news-gathering organization, but a lot of these companies deny it. Now, I don't know who's right and wrong right now. Maybe we'll learn over the course of the day. But look, the bigger picture, China does not play by the rules. They haven't for about 20 years. We have complained about IP theft, forced transfers of technology, plus high tariffs on agriculture and industrial, tar uh, industrial materials. So I don't know if it's true, but everybody should be on guard to see if it's true. And the Chinese just have got to play by the rules. The U.S. is now, look, we got the U.S. MFA, uh, MCA. God, I got to get that right. We got, an, <laughs> we got a tripart deal with the EU and Japan and the U.S., which is directly aimed at getting China to play by the rules. The president has been tough as nails on China. As you know, his negotiating strategy will include tariffs if necessary. So their, their response is unsatisfactory, and we need to keep an eye on these stories. Okay. We need to keep an eye on these stories. Larry, I promise to try to be a bit more positive uh, about this economy. I want you to future. take the over. on the, Don't take the under. Take the over on the whole story. If I understood sports gambling, I'd probably agree with you, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> Larry Cudlow, everyone, great guy. Thank Thanks you. for joining Thank us, you, sir. Thank you, Stu. Much obliged. Thank you.